very special guest with us here today. And it Am I special? Yes, you are very, very, very Thank special you. to Thank us all because I listen to you all the time. Aww. The uh, radio presenter of The Ride Home with Brent Black. Yay! Yay! The sound of one person clapping. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm real excited to be here. Uh, we're really excited to have you here. Aww. So, uh, I think uh, just tell us a bit about yourself so people can know everything, something about you. Uh, what do you want to know? I mean, there's a, there's, I mean, that's a, that is a big question. Tell us something <laughs> about yourself. So where are you from? Okay. Uh, well, I grew up in a very tiny town called Lagro, Indiana, in the United States. Lagro. Yeah. How many? How population? What? Five hundred, and that's if everybody is there. Nobody's out of town. Okay. Um, and uh, I stayed there throughout my youth. Moved around a little bit. Uh, eventually, I ended up in Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, which was a big deal for me because nobody in my family went to university. I was the first one ever. I see. There's a lot of first generation students at Indiana University. Yeah, yeah it's true. They have a program actually for yeah. first generation, and I was part of that program. I see. I okay. got so lucky. I was not a terribly good student in high school. I mean, I, I just didn't like school very much. Um, I, I liked the social aspects of it, you know, I like, I mean, but. As far as the grades and stuff, my grades were not fantastic, so I just basically, I never studied and just got by. I Wait, got what, what did you study? What was your major? In Indiana? Yeah. Uh, I started with criminal justice. Actually, okay. I started with journalism. Okay. Got really tired of that in the first semester. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was when I saw the, uh, the job postings board in the journalism department. Uh, Ernie Pyle Hall, I remember. And okay, I, I yeah. went in there, I looked it up, and all the jobs were just depressing. It was just, <laughs> there was nothing. and. Uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to change my major. I decided to go for criminal justice because my parents, I think, always wanted me to be a lawyer. Uh, I did that degree and it was really easy. I was just kind of surprised how mm. easy it was. And then I decided, uh, I wasn't done yet, I decided to add political science because I was really interested in politics. Mm. I just basically it was just an excuse to continue going to school and never leave because I really enjoyed the yeah. kind of the university life. And, and how long did you wind up being in, in Bloomington? For? Oh man, I lived in Bloomington for twelve years, nearly twelve years. I love that town. It, it's just a if you've never lived in a college town, especially in the United States, I don't know how they vary around the world, but college town in the United States, it's just uh, it's just the the coolest feeling for a young person. Mm -hmm. It's everything so accepting. And and you, you're learning so much about yourself at that age, um, and and you're kind of learning uh, how to be how to be an adult and trying to figure out what you want to do. I really didn't know what I wanted to do, so I just kept going to school. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I did finally graduate. Um, there's a, a lot of stories that are involved in that, but I, I paid my own way through college, so it was it was a kind of a struggle, and I took a long time to finally get through it. But I did. <laughs> So I know uh, in the beginning you were told by people though, like your boss and friends, to actually try and audition for, you know, a mm. radio position, a presenter. Where'd you hear that? Uh, on the Virgin <laughs> Radio website. I had uh, what I call uh, a few angels in my life, and not to get metaphysical or anything, but a few people. I don't mean that in, in that way so much, but I mean, I had three or four people in my life that were key in guiding me to what I would eventually end up doing. And I think we all have those people, yeah. um, for better or for worse, actually. Mm -hmm. you know, some people that, <coughs> you know, that drive you into what you should be doing or what you might end up doing. And so, yeah, I had, uh, I had, I was working at a newspaper in Bloomington, Indiana, actually. It was mm -hmm. one of my just kind of What was films. the name? It's called uh, the Herald Times. Yeah, okay, I know it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I really wasn't, I wasn't not enjoying it, but it certainly wasn't something I wanted to do. I was yeah. basically earning money so I could stay in school and finish. Uh, but my boss there, she was uh, this great girl named Sasha, and uh, Sasha was like, you, you really should be doing this. You need, to be, you need to be on television, is what she said. For some reason, she <laughs> kept saying, you need to be on television. You need to be doing something in the media. Um, and she sent me this job posting for hosting. It, it, this is going to sound really weird, but it's, it's hosting a karaoke competition that toured oh. the United States. And uh, it was uh, part of this thing for Schick Razors. <laughs> and they did the, it, it was, it's bizarre, but anyway, they, they had uh, the first year they had this guy named Carson Daly as the host, and they paid him a bunch of money. Well, I know, the famous I, I, Carson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So they paid yeah. him. A, this yeah. was back in the TRL days when he was doing. TRL he was really TV. big at that time. He was okay. He yeah. was like a media. He's not as big now because he's doing the voice anyway. Yeah. But he was. He, he was just off TRL, yeah. which is Total Request Live, which was on MTV back in the day. It was really popular. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so they hired him the first year, paid him a bunch of money. The second year, they wanted to do this national tour. Uh, they they decided they wanted to save some money, mm. so. Um, they went on a talent search, and mm. I remember Sasha. She posted. She sent me this posting uh, on this uh, TVJobs.com or something. She's mm -hmm. like, "You need to go audition for this." Mm -hmm. And it was in Chicago, which is, you know, I don't know if you know. It's, of course, oh. you know it's like five-hour drive, probably away oh, from Virginia. Sure. sure. So I'm like, okay. So uh, I uh, I applied for some reason. They they had me fly in, which is like the first thing is like, wow, somebody actually wants to fly me somewhere. <laughs> um, I flew to Chicago. They liked me. They said, well, you gotta you gotta talk to these guys at BSMG, which is some marketing company, a huge marketing company in New York. So what what year was this, by the way? Oh, this we're talking. Was, uh, what year was this? Two thousand. Okay, that's oh. kind of what I thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is actually no, no, no. This would have been like late '99 when they were doing the audition process. Okay, okay. Uh, and this is your big break, basically. This was basically what got me doing something other than. Well, anything else, I guess. <laughs> anything, anything else you've ever yeah, thought yeah, of taking this before. This is what got me into, the, I guess, the media industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, they flew me to New York, and it was the weirdest thing, because I literally flew into Manhattan. I'd never been anywhere. They flew me into Manhattan. Um, I got into a taxi, did this interview, saw Rockefeller Plaza like for literally two minutes, got back in a taxi and back to the airport. It was literally in and out. I was, I was in New York City for an hour, mm -hmm. and they, they interviewed me. They basically just wanted to get a look at me, said, okay, so I ended up doing this tour, this tour across... Oh, so they hired you? Yeah, they did. Because well, it sounded like a bad story. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They had to know. So, so, well, well. so I did this tour across <laughs> the United States, and the so idea straight was... straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, I, I ended up doing the tour. It, it was a summer tour for like four months. And, and uh, what they do is they do news hits. The mm. whole idea of this thing was to get Schick, the razor company, and their new products on television. And so oh. what they did was they did this shower... Um, sort of a shower room on wheels where people did karaoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what they would do is they'd get the people from the, the morning show on news channels, television news channels, to come out as their kind of B-roll. And they'd be doing, so you know how they do wacky yeah. things, they'll go out to the state fair or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, That's their weather they person would come out with me and they'd be showering and doing karaoke. <laughs> Um, and then we'd have events and stuff. Um, so I did news hits great. across the U.S., right? So this so was sponsored by Schick, I'm yeah. guessing? Okay. Yeah, Schick Razors. Interesting. Um, Three blades, no hassles. I'll always remember that was the thing. They, <laughs> make sure you get that when you do the news hit, because they'd come with the cameras on you. Make sure you, somehow you, you get that in. They yeah. called it a, what do they call it, a glimmer or something. Anyway, so I did that. I ended up doing that. And after it was over, it's like, what am I going to do now? And Sasha, again, my, my manager at this newspaper that I wasn't working for anymore, said, yeah. why don't you try radio? You know, and I said, I don't know anything about radio. She's like, well, just make something up. So... I did a little investigation, and what you need to do, I already knew this a little bit, when you go into radio, you need something called an air check. It's just what you would sound like on the radio, or what you do sound like. Ideally, it's just a, a, a reel of stuff that you've already done on the radio. Okay. So, <clears throat> and it's some of your best stuff, but like two minutes or less of your best stuff. Your sizzle reel. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So. I didn't have anything like that because I've never been on the radio in my life. Mm. So what I did was... Let me guess, you made you it up. You showed them the shake ones. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I took this stack of CDs, okay. uh, like six or seven CDs, and I took them to a wedding photographer, <laughs> videographer guy. He had a little tiny studio where he edited his wedding videos. I mm -hmm. said, here's what I want to do. I just want to do an audio, just put it on uh, a CD, and I'm just going to talk up and down the tail ends of these songs and into another one. We need to make it like... You know, a minute or two long, and I just need it to sound like I'm actually on the radio. Mm -hmm. I would love to have this CD. I have no idea where it is. Yeah, that old physical media gets that lost. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It's it may exist somewhere, but if it does, I don't know where. Yeah, um, we should go look for it. Oh, yeah, that first ever <laughs> recording of Black. It was so bad. I guarantee it was horrible. <laughs> but Sasha took it to this uh, this local uh, radio station uh, in Indianapolis. It's named WTTS, and. Uh, uh, for some reason, the program director there, mm. and she talked, and, and for some reason, he decided to put, to give me a chance. I don't know why, because mm. I'm sure it sounded horrible. They put you right on the radio. No, well, in a way, so I had a meeting, they met with me, they, I guess, you know, I guess your personality goes a long way. If, if people yeah. like you, they want to yeah. do good things for you. That's kind of sure. <coughs> always what I've kind of thought. Yeah. So, they, they, they had me in, and the nighttime guy... Uh, said, you want to do a break? It was during his nighttime show. It's like, I've never been on radio in my life, and it's probably 8, 9 o'clock, maybe 7, 30, 8 o'clock at night. 
which is not a bad time to be on the radio. He's like, go ahead, do a break. And which is to me now. To what does it mean to this, do a break, by the way? Just to open the mic up after a song or or whatever, and just, okay. just start talking. This is basically what I did at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like uh, it depends. I mean, a, a break now, whatever whatever that means. It for me, just to say a break, that's a, a an expression I use just to do something on the radio, just to say something on the radio. Sure. You may not actually be breaking. The reason it's called a break is because you're breaking from music going into commercial. But you're not. Uh, when I say a break, I mean you're just. Same just song. saying something on the radio. Between the songs. Between the songs. Yeah. So he had me talk up uh, a song, and the first one went okay. It was like, it's all right. And then he went out of the room and said, yeah, why don't you do the next one? <laughs> Again, to me, anybody taking over my show, especially somebody who's never been on the radio, is a big no-no. I can't believe you let me do that. The second <laughs> break I did, I got overconfident, and, and it's, a, it's a traditional mistake that people, young people in radio do. You don't know where you're going to go. You always want to know where you're going to start a break and where you're going to end it. Yes, sir. And everything else in the middle kind of fills out. Mm -hmm. I didn't know where I was ending it, so I kind of ended up in this this loop where I just kept talking. It's like, <laughs> how am I getting out of this? You know, and finally, I did. And he was listening in another room, another studio. And, okay. And, and I walk in, and I'm like, you know, I said that was not great. That was not good at all. And he's like, hey, it happens to everybody. So it was a big mm -hmm. lesson for me. You know, so he so. was a good mentor yeah. for you. He was good, actually. Good that he this gave was you a chance. this was in Indianapolis. Indian, uh, it was an Indianapolis station, and I was very lucky that the the studio itself, the physical mm -hmm. studio, was in Bloomington, about an hour south of the tower. So it broadcast to a, a potential million or so people in wow. in Indianapolis. But That's Bloomington cool. itself is like a college town <coughs> of a hundred thousand. So it was a great place to grow. Sure. So what what they did was they ended up putting me on overnights, uh, which means um, you start at midnight. And you end at five or six o'clock in the morning. The graveyard shift yeah, for when the nobody's listening. Well, uh, I don't know about that. It's a big enough city. You got basically you yeah, have I'm sure people are you have people coming time. from the clubs. Yeah, and you have the <laughs> paper boys and the trash men. Right. But it's it's exactly the time you want to make all your mistakes. Actually, yeah. they put me on on overnight weekends, which is is even actually it's better in a way because more people are up late at night on the weekend. But uh, nobody wants to work those shifts. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. Nobody wants to work from midnight to six or seven or eight in the morning. Well, it's a good starting day. gig. For it's an amazing. So I was, yeah. it was, I was so excited. I mean, so excited. Are you recording from Bloomington the whole, this whole time? Uh, or was it just south of Bloomington, you said? Or? What do you mean? The location. The the actual the studio radio. was no the studio was in Bloomington. Yeah, right. But the tower was in Indianapolis. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, so yeah, you didn't so actually have to commute I didn't to have Indiana. To go. No, no, no. This is kind of inside time. baseball for people that know yeah. Indiana geography. It's right, like an right. hour from Indianapolis. No. If you're listening to this, you know nothing about Indiana. That's fine. <laughs> Just know that uh, about it. Imagine imagine uh, living in Dubai. Uh, but the the broadcast is is going into Abu Dhabi. That's basically it. It's, it's a little further, I think, to, to oh. Abu Dhabi from Dubai than it is to, from Bloomington. Yeah, Indiana. it's about an hour, hour ten. Yeah, about an hour, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so it's just. Uh, it, but it was, you know, the population center is in Indianapolis. So it was such a good thing. Yeah. The funny thing is, you you know, but I mean, you can also hear, of course, the station in Bloomington. Um, but the funny thing is, you you're you're doing it for a different audience than you live in, which is an odd, kind of an odd thing to do. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Um, your primary audience is, is far away. So it was a, but it was a great place to learn. What a great place to learn and make all of your, well, make many of your mistakes. I won't say make all of your mistakes because I still make <laughs> mistakes daily. Okay, so you were there, but what made you, I know they opened Virgin Radio Dubai here, but what made you really convinced to come to Dubai oh, then, well, if you loved it so much? There was a big there. step in the, in the middle there. So eventually I, uh, I, I worked my way up in this station, this uh, first station I was on. I worked my way up to full-time, uh, well, first it was full-time overnights. Mm -hmm. oh. I said, you, you want that job? I was like, yeah, I'll take that job. So I was <laughs> doing every good. every uh, Sunday through, or every Monday through Friday overnights. Um, of course, Friday starts at midnight on Thursday night, so I didn't actually have to work weekends, oh. which was like, yeah, that was like the first time in my life I didn't have to work weekends. Yeah. <laughs> so I was doing overnights, and then I got promoted to, to nighttime full-time. And after that, I'm like, okay, I, I don't want to be in in this market, this, I mean, as much as it's, and it's so hard to leave your college town, but I don't want to be here forever. Am I going to do this? And I always wanted to go to move to Los Angeles and give it a try oh, because there, there are two huge markets. The biggest markets in the United States are New York and LA. But to me, I'm much more of an LA kind of a yeah. feeling person. I always felt more comfortable in LA versus New York. It's more of a laid back place. And so I, I thought, to go to LA. huh? I always wanted to go to LA. Yeah, well, you should. You, there's I, lots of I time. Will. You will. You will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, either love it or hate it. That's one thing. People either really love or, or really don't like LA so much. True. You'll be alone. Sure. Um, so I, I, uh, I decided what I'm going to do 
am I going to just try this? And I quit my job, and I didn't have anything in L.A. I just quit my job. I, I That's kind of what most people do at some point, sometime, right? At some point, make, you have to cut Make that cut pilgrimage. Yeah. If you wait for something that just to happen, it's so much easier to to get something when you're in it versus yeah. try. It's almost like trying to do surgery by remote control, trying to yeah. get a job in some place that's thousands of miles away. Mm. You can do it, but it's so much easier if you're in, sure. in it and you can you can meet the people and be right in front yeah. of them. So basically, I just I quit my full-time job. It was one of the hardest things I ever did. I saved up through various means, and they're all legal, I promise, but weird, <laughs> weird ways, I saved up $5,000. I thought, this is my goal. I need $5,000 to survive and, and get to LA and figure this out. So I packed up all my worldly belongings and drove across country, moved to LA, no job, ended up, uh, and I'll, 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 again, these are all long stories, but I will cut it short. Ended up somehow getting um, in front of the program director at this place called KOST Los Angeles, which is a, uh, at the time it was called Clear Channel, now it's iHeart Media, a uh, huge Clear Channel station. And, the pr and this was another one of my you know, angels, um, her name's Stella Schwartz, and she was the program director of a couple of stations there. She was mm. a massive program director. And uh, she, for some reason, met me and gave me uh, an overnight board op shift. And what that means in radio, board op, board op or panel op is just when you sit there and you watch it. You're not on the radio. You're not you're talking. Just, yeah, you're not talking. You're, you're just, just checking. making sure everything runs on the air. In the United States, it's uh, a law that someone has to be monitoring I see. every radio station in case of emergency. But it got your in foot case? in the door. Yes. What kind it. of emergency? Uh, storms, typically. Oh, uh, some okay. sort of weather emergency. That's that's the the most likely, and that's how that's happened to me before on, on the radio. Oh. Uh, some sort of major news event. If you you know obviously, you know nine eleven. Do you get to train for something like that? Do you get uh, to they, know what to do, or is uh, it just they they basically tell you to call somebody. They they tell you they tell you to um, you know. I, if something goes off, you need to call somebody. But they're ma mainly, like I said, it was weather alerts, um, and I didn't know what to do in a weather alert. You basically switch it over. There's a, a national weather service that you yeah. switch it over to, yeah. and then it, okay. gives, it gives you reports of what's what's supposed to be done, like wh wh where you need to seek shelter and all that. So you're connected to other radios, basically. You get to. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I I moved to LA. I got this overnight board op shift. Within a year, I met another one of these people that really helped me named uh, Dave Dennis, who was the program director of another radio station in iHeartMedia, or Clear Channel. And he said, have I ever heard an air check from you, Brent? He just heard me talking with friends. What's it, and once again, air check just air meaning check is the, the sizzle reel. The, uh, the, yeah, oh, the, the sizzle reel. The, the, gotcha. the, the recording child of talk you, the, yeah. the recording. But this time, I actually had You actually had it, because yeah. you had worked, you had worked for radio. years. Yeah. I said, no, you haven't heard an air check from me. So <laughs> uh, I got him one, and after being in LA for a year, I, I was so, um, because it is so competitive to be on the radio. Sure. In most markets, but Especially in LA. Especially in LA, right? Oh my God. Yeah. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't find a more competitive market. Sure. But within a year, I was amazed. I had Weekends and Phil wow. on a major radio station. And so what year, what year are we talking now? That would have been 2004. Okay. Uh, 2005. All right. So I moved to LA in 2004, 2005, I was on air. And within two weeks of me being on air, Phil, I was doing the drive show. I was filling in for this guy named, this legendary guy named Gary Spears, who's out sick. And I was on, I was doing drive. I was doing drive time in Los Angeles. Yeah, and if you know and Los, Los Angeles traffic, yeah, yeah. everyone's it's stuck in yeah, traffic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? so everyone's yeah. millions of people. Oh, yeah, I mean, wow. you, you're just, it's just, I could not believe my good fortune, and and I I, I literally cried <laughs> when I got. When I got the gig, so I was out. I, I remember there's a we had this kind of veranda, this uh, patio outside Clear Channel uh, in Burbank, and I went out there and I got a little misty eyed because I thought I cannot believe I made it. It was such a because it was such a uh, a difficult thing to do to leave comfort, mm. you know, yeah. a comfortable position, place you love, and then go to a place you don't really know. You you th you think you want to be there, and you go. It was just it was it was a very emotional moment. So anyway. And then ab about a year after that, I got full-time drive. I, I ended up replacing that guy. Oh. Gary Spears. Uh, yeah, I uh, ended up taking his, uh, which, w which in radio is a very painful thing to go through to lose your job, and, and you always respect people. Because again, this guy was a legend, but through contracts and things, it just didn't work out for him, and they ended up letting him go. I ended up getting his job. Um, it never feels good to, to 
succeed in someone else's failures, you know, or, or take someone's place like that. But yeah, it's it was it was <coughs> something that hard. absolutely made my career at the time. Once mm -hmm. you're on drive in LA, you you, you just you become more of a, a property, I guess, a, a wanted commodity, even though I didn't know anything. It's like, what? So about a year after that, they changed the format and we all got fired. No. <laughs> oh. and, and, and what, and what was the format they changed it to? They, they changed, they actually changed all the marketing and branding. Mm -hmm. It was called KBIG 104 at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, they ended up, while I was actually still on air, we, they changed the, uh, they changed things a little bit to KBIG, 104.3 KBIG, because they wanted to get rid of that big image that mm -hmm. they had for decades. Mm -hmm. It was a, called a heritage station, something that's been around forever. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to change it up a little bit, because oddly enough, research showed that women didn't like the word big <laughs> in, in something. So it's like, okay, <laughs> they just were uncomfortable with it for some reason. So, so, so they said KBIG, Los Angeles. And then about six months after that, they finally decided that they wanted to make a change, and so they changed it from K-Big, and we all knew it was coming, sadly. You're not supposed to know on radio when you're gonna get fired, but we all kind of felt it was probably coming. Yeah. Like they changed it from K-Big to MyFM, and now it's called MyFM. Oh. Um, and it's actually, MyFM is now a chain of stations around, owned by iHeartMedia, it's like a brand, sort of like the KISS brand is a uh, iHeartMedia brand. So they, they changed that, they, f they got rid of almost everybody except one person that was still in contract. Um, that they were either going to have to pay out for two years or keep on the radio. So, and she's great. I'm so glad that she got to keep her job. Um, but uh, everybody else is going. So that is what kind of sent. And 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 <coughs> losing your job, losing your dream job, uh, is not something I recommend. Yeah. But it, I mean, it just sent it sent me into this like, what am I going to do now? Yeah. And and I was instantly like, well, I'm going to get back on the radio. I'm going to you know, whatever I gotta do. And I was like, I'm not leaving Los Angeles. I'm staying here and I'm getting a job back on LA radio. Again, in 2000, this was 2000, end of 2007. So you've, this is interesting to hear about your ups and downs. Oh. So basically yeah. you went out to LA, you got your big break. Yeah. Here, and millions and millions like of people are listening to you and then you got fired. Yep. Unfortunately, not millions enough. We were probably, there are 80, 80 something, 85, 86 radio stations in LA. We mm. were top 20. Okay. But That's pretty good though. Yeah, but wasn't it, they always felt like they could do better and during all this time what kind of music are you like this particular yeah, station awesome. uh, the format was and it still is hot AC it's called hot adult contemporary okay so you've got and I could probably talk a long time about formats and what they mean but mm. um, basically a hot AC station well you've got adult contemporary which would be the really kind of slower um, music for older people in the States, that would be like um, Michael Bolton mm. or um, um, Michael Buble, oh. Kelly Clarkson, okay. um, maybe some of Taylor Swift's slower songs. Um, Celine Dion is a great example. Mm -hmm. um, hot so basically AC. not the trending, like super trending ones, like the ones on... They, they take the absolute most popular but not too poppy songs. Mm. Oh. Okay. But also the so more mature artists. Okay. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Now, you've got a station like, say, Virgin Radio Dubai, which would be like the Kiss FM in LA. Yeah. They are the top 40 station. That's called CHR, Contemporary Hits Radio. Okay. Um, between the CHR and the AC stations, you have what's called Hot AC. Hot AC is still for a slightly older audience than the pop station, the virgins or the kisses. It's just for somebody somebody that still wants to feel like they're in tune with what's new-ish, mm -hmm. but not so on the edge of everything new. So hot AC would be like Beyonce um, and Taylor Swift and, and, and all the pop, well, many of the pop songs that aren't quite the DJs. You probably won't get a lot yeah. of David Guetta. You won't get a lot of uh, dance music. You won't, get, you won't get much rock. Things like that. It's sort of in so the middle of the road. So more listening rather than jamming. Yeah, yeah. Almost like not dancing. Yeah, it's like it, what basically the, the concept is, and it's a great concept to keep people. Our our core audience, you always want to try to bring women. Women is the key to getting radio because men will follow the women wherever they go. Right. It's true. True in life. True in radio. So it's called the wall of women. Mm -hmm. So you get them when they're very young mm -hmm. with Kiss FM or, or CHR, you know, contemporary hits, pop radio. Mm -hmm. You get them when they're young. 
then you carry them over to Hot AC, which still brings some of the pop songs of today, but also some of the stuff that they were listening to back when they were in high school. Mm. So you keep around a lot of the hits. And then as they get older, you send them to AC, the adult contemporary, which is still a little bit of the slower, smoother songs that they were <laughs> listening to before, a little teeny tiny bit of what's out today and then some of the uh, old standards, some of the older classics. Oh, wow. So there are tactics to, oh my God. to radio. It's, a it's, science. Science. it's it is, super yeah. thought out. It is a science. <laughs> Everything down to every song you hear was thought out why it's playing at that time of the day right now. Hmm. Whoa. Yeah. I just Incredible. thought it was like a... So I was on a, a, a hot AC station, um, and it was called KBIG, and then they changed it to something called MyFM, which was still hot okay. AC. Okay, but they, okay, so that was after they fired you yes. and your colleagues, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they did what? <laughs> okay, so let's get it's back true. to your... It's true, they did great. No, it was, a good, it, was the, it was the best move for them. They did a great, yeah. they did a, I mean, we were doing well, but now they're doing great. I see. They're top five now, I think. So then what happened to you? Was this 07 or so? It was o end of 07. Um, the, the weekend, see, I was doing weekend fill before I got full-time mm -hmm. drive. And so the guy that took my place weekend fill was this South African guy named Revan. And um, we became friends, and, and I did, I'd kind of told our program director, hey, this is the guy that should replace me. He said, what do you think of Revan? I was like, yeah, I really like him. I think Because he, he's different. You don't hear a lot of accents mm. on uh, American radio. South African, South African yeah. yeah. So uh, Revan always kind of remembered that. And... When we all got, he got fired with me as well. He, mm. he lost his weekend shifts. He's driving to Bakersfield for like six dollars an hour, which is like a two-hour drive for six dollars. He just wanted to be on the radio. Yeah, um, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't drive to Bakersfield. <laughs> anyway, that's a kind of kind of a California thing. Again, inside baseball thing. Yeah. That, uh, nobody would, here would really know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, don't go to Bakersfield. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, um, so. He came to me one day, he said, hey, let's, let's go grab a drink. And so we go over to this, uh, this restaurant and uh, he says, hey, I got a job. I'm like, you're kidding me. And I'm just thinking, the weekend guy got a job before the drive guy. And I'm like, oh, it just like, but I was, I, was, I was happy for him. I was like, what? He said, I got breakfast. I'm like, breakfast? Nobody says breakfast in the US. We right. say the morning show. What are you talking about? Yeah. He's like, they're, uh, they're opening up Virgin Radio in Dubai and they give me breakfast. Or I got breakfast and I was like, it's incredible. First of all, it's just an un unbelievable thing. You got the morning show, and secondly, Dubai. Wow, really? This was two thousand end of two thousand seven. All I knew of Dubai was a uh, the Burj Al Arab, and uh, a sixty minutes interview with Sheikh Mohammed. I heard one time. Mm -hmm. That was it. And uh, but it sounded fascinating. Yeah. He said they asked me if I knew anybody else who might want to come. Oh. And I said, really? He said, yeah. And I said, I might. I said, and I was talking about you. And so um, I, I didn't know, I, man, it just blew my mind. It's like, wow, I didn't have my passport. I didn't have my passport, you know? Had you left the country before? I had been, been to Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need your passport to go to Tijuana? You didn't then. You didn't then. You didn't then. Now you need uh, either your passport or uh, they have some sort of, a, they have an ID, a special yeah. ID that you can use, but it's not your driver's license. Back then, you just needed your driver's license. Yeah, to go yeah, on. yeah, yeah. They just looked at you, and yeah, you could yeah. tell whether or not you're trying to cross the border. <laughs> I guess. I, yeah. Um, so, uh, I got, I got, I had an interview with our our CEO, uh, International Virgin Radio International <coughs> the CEO. His name's uh, Ian Grace, and uh, he's this Af South, uh, excuse me, Australian guy. He's great. I love it. Um, and we had this long discussion. And then I got interviewed by this uh, program director named Steve Pulley, who was our very first program director. And then I got interviewed by HR, and I always remember the HR woman said, uh, people, uh, people in Dubai, they're, they're not nice like you'd be used to people in LA. It's like, you've never been to Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hit or miss, I yeah, think. Yeah. It's like, what? So yeah. they had in my head filled with all these different things. Mm. Uh, within six weeks, I was on a plane mm. to Dubai, and I had had to sell all my stuff or most of my stuff and yep. I still have, I still have nine years later I still have stuff in a garage in my garage in Burbank oh. it's just waiting there it's just like <laughs> sitting there um, but what an adventure so that's that's basically what brought me here when I got here we were in a different place we're in this crappy I, it's still over there by Maktoum Bridge mm -hmm. studio at Dubai TV it looks like a, a, a kindergarten School that uh, was built in the '80s, which it probably was built in the '80s. It's oh, just so it's just so dumpy. <laughs> it's such a dump. But you know, it was our dump, and you know, they they 
basically they made an offer I couldn't refuse to, to come. And, and how big was the station in Dubai at that time when you first we came We had out no here? listeners, zero. Okay. We were brand new. I see. The, You're just I launching mean, we, from we, scratch. Yeah, we were, um, the 104.4 signal I believe was an Arabic station of some kind and mm. then they got rid of it. Mm. Um, and I remember I was still in LA when Revan went on for his very first break. Mm. Um, just kind of testing things out. Are you able to listen to it from LA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was online. I and, see. Uh, and so I listened to it, and I remember he said something like, uh, oh, you didn't expect to hear me, did you? Something like that. It was <laughs> yeah. one of those things. Yeah. And, uh, and that was, and we were off, and then a couple of weeks later I was there, and we had our official launch um, March of 2008. I was there February, I, was, I came in February 28th of uh, 2008, and in the next month we had our official launch. Mm with this amazing launch party that they spent far too much money on. <laughs> it, was in, it was out in DIFC. I yeah. remember it was out in the, out in the uh, outside area. This huge party. They spent so much money on it. Didn't get us anything, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And yeah. they, I always remember they had an actual tattoo artist <laughs> doing real tattoos at our no opening way. party. Yeah, did you yeah. get one? No, I did not. Yeah. I have no tattoos. They, yeah. they don't even allow tattoos exactly. here it's anymore. Exactly. Yeah. It's not even allowed. It's not. It's it wasn't allowed then now. either. I oh, really? It wasn't allowed then, but somehow we had a tattoo artist doing real tattoos at our Virgin Radio Dubai Whoa. launch party. That's cool. Uh, no. That was awesome. <laughs> that, yeah. that sounds great. I don't so, know anybody that got one, but I know that people did. So when you came, you were were you worried at all that it wouldn't work out, though? Or were you sure that this was going to be the next big thing for you? No, 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 no. I, I said to myself, I'll give it a couple of years. That's really what it was. I said, I'll give it a couple of years. But I still... I was focused. I will be back on the radio in LA. I mean, I never let it at, the, at that time. I had n still not let it go. Yeah. This is a very temporary adventure kind of a thing. Yeah, for me. I see. You know, I I was. It's always LA. Yeah. 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 Well, it was just it was just like, uh, you know, I I I'm always put I put everything into something. So I wasn't going to not try to make this something yeah. successful. But when we started out, I mean, we couldn't sell an ad. We couldn't mm. sell any commercials. Mm. I'll tell you, we, uh, one of the first big clients we had was Durex. Durex <laughs> condoms. <laughs> nice. And, oh. <laughs> and they couldn't believe that we would allow them on the, on the radio station. We created these commercials for them and they were on our radios. And we had like, Whoa. for some reason, we had so many boxes of condoms and lube <laughs> in our, <laughs> lubrication in our store. It's like, it was everywhere. It was in our office because no one, no radio station would put Durex on, even though they're right there in front of the cash register at every gas station. Right. Yeah. Right. It's something that's almost like something people don't talk about, Taboo. but it's yeah. just there. Yeah. But we were like, but yes, we'll do it. Yes, we'll do it. Sure, we'll do of it. So one of, our first, so. one of our first clients. But we were doing so much music mm -hmm. people loved it well yeah. the people the five people that were listening probably <laughs> loved it because we had no commercials and just just <coughs> off on the radio so how about the growth so what has the growth been like since you started in 2008 until 2017 how would you describe that growth i don't know if i'm allowed to say the numbers but i'm going to <laughs> uh here, here you go there's some good stuff that you wouldn't you just won't hear anywhere i hope i don't get in trouble for this but um we uh i think we finally hit uh okay so, so in the beginning we had nothing zero mm -hmm. in fact yeah. it was like I remember hearing some Negative. rumblings of that they were talking about getting rid of the station. You see. Um, when we first got here, I remember uh, the big meeting. It was over in what's now the Media City Amphitheater. They had they spent so much money. It, it was just like a huge banquet. They they put up a stage. Done events did an amazing stage. They created an, an awards show within three days. Literally three days from having nothing, somebody decided, hey, let's have an awards show for good employees. They created this uh, amazing looking lucite plastic. Uh, award for people they created they, they got the the nominees and everything all together i don't know how they did it in three days they had this big stage like a concert stage in yeah. the middle of of media city and i remember the uh ceo at the time abdul latif al saya said don't worry the bonuses are still going to be there's rumors the bonuses are still going to be paid and i said wow oh. and then he introduced everybody he's like oh i want to introduce um uh the staff at mtv and these uh, big bunch of people. I mean, we had 2,000 people in the yeah. company. AMG, I mean, Arab Media Group, 2,000 people at the time. Uh, and he was introducing all the departments. And uh, he's like, I, I love that we have MTV now. MTV is brand new then. Mm -hmm. Had this big staff. And he's like, I'm very ha very excited to have Virgin Radio now. We, we are just, because this is my music. Right? He's a young guy. And uh, we stood up and like, that's cool. You know, it felt good. And then he, he mentioned the bonus thing. Now, 2008, I'm sure you know was the beginning of the end yeah. for the economy. Right. Yeah. You know, it, we were just on this precipice of just about to dive. 
<laughs> and a lot of people felt it. And the first <laughs> industry that feels it is marketing and advertising. Sure. And yeah, advertising was just dying. Um, within uh, a year, we were down from 2,000 employees to like 400. They just, wow. I mean, I remember we had, we had, but we had a lot of like unnecessary things. We had a fleet of drivers. Mm -hmm. and a manager for the drivers. <laughs> so if you need to go wow. somewhere, you need to go to Media City, yeah, because you know, we were always going back and forth. Mm -hmm. There was, there were, it, it was a sad time because a lot of good, good people lost their jobs. Yeah. And, and it made me sad. Um, they decided to keep us. MTV did not last. If, if you know now, there's, there's no, I mean, there's an MTV, no MTV. but there's no, no staff. Yeah. They, had a ho they had hosts, they had these studios, right mm -hmm. next to ours actually, with, uh, you know, beautiful, camera equipment and, and an auditorium for they for don't have much now they never did it they never yeah. even used it yeah they had just hired I remember a guy from LA uh, contacted me when I was first here and he said hey I'm coming to uh, to work for Nickelodeon oh. and because we were gonna have Nickelodeon right yeah all of the all those people that they hired never even came because they're like Ouch. you know they all they got cut off yeah. so many different divisions so we, we got down to basically AMG we got was we had newspapers everything it got down to AR and AMG is the parent. So we had the Arabian parent. Radio Network and Dunn Events. And that was it. That was all that was left. Dunn Events runs concerts and other events. Yeah. Right? Um, it was a, a rough time. It was a, and and it, looking back now, I realize how lucky we were that they continued to give us a chance. But we ran with it, and we ran through those hard times. And, and Chris and I were, you know, he's my best friend here. Um, we eventually convinced Chris you just need to do the breakfast show. You need to do mornings. He, he was doing what I do now. He was doing drive for a couple of years. Oh. And I was doing the midday and, and bored, just absolutely bored off my mind because mm. it's just such a boring shift. It's just, it's just the midday. People are working. They're not really as active. There's not as many people on the road or whatever. So I always, I've always loved drive. So we finally convinced Chris to take mornings. And at the time, he was with a guy named Chad. Again, this, there's so many things about this. Chad was supposed to work with Revan, but Revan got fired. So then he ended up working with this guy named... Uh, Oh, uh, who, who replaced Revan at first? This American guy, um, Cal, Khaled, Cal, but he's American, uh, Egyptian American. He didn't work out, he lasted about six months. Finally, we convinced Chris, Chris to take the morning show. Chad came along with Chris. It was a Chris Fade show with Chad. Eventually, Chad decided to leave. Now it's the Chris Fade show. We brought in Pretty Malik, Big and Rossi Big came Rossi. in. Um, and so that's now kind of the lineup. I ended up, when Chris finally took mornings, I ended up where I wanted to be in drive, so I've been doing drive about six and a half, seven years, something yeah. like that. Yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. So, and... And, and I, it's pretty successful. I, I love mean. being, and I love being drive. Yeah, so what I was saying is as far as, as far as how successful we are, I mean, you measure it in money. It's all, the only way you can really measure it. And we were making nothing in 2008, and now recently we build about seven million in one month. So seven Whoa. million dirhams in a month, which is... Wow. is really really high for this market so that's kind of that's kind of the the measure of success you make so seven million dirhams a month in advertising revenue right. is what you're saying okay. right, right, right. Wow. so again from that's zero no, yeah in from, 2008. From nothing in 2008 from from being a losing by definitely a losing mm -hmm. venture if you really want to talk about it, it's less than zero you know yeah at some point it went down yeah. to negative you were right. losing money yeah after the we crisis. started by you know all the investments yeah. and stuff yeah i heard something on the, on the radio we do this thing called abc it's where the businesses come to try mm. to get a, a a rate a lower rate on advertising mm -hmm. it's really cool because a lot of businesses sign up so they can take the thing is you have to sign up for like a year or whatever um in order to take advantage of much lower rates so we do this thing, and, and all these these businesses come in, and we always sell out. It's always a sellout, which is great. And it's not just for Virgin; it's for all of our stations. We have nine. Um, was it eight? Eight or nine? Know, nine. Um, anyway, um, one of the things I heard on we we run these spots to invite businesses to come, and I heard the other day, and, and, and I thought, oh, that's so true. Radio is something that costs millions to produce, and it's totally free. Right. It's one of the it's one of the only things that costs so much money to produce yet. All you have to do is turn on your radio and get it. Mm -hmm. you sure, you have to pay for it by listening, to, maybe listening to commercials, but you don't have to. Or just, just get paid yep. to get a car and then listen to a radio. Well, yeah. I think that's yes. the only. But now you have radio online and everything. Yeah, yeah. we're everywhere. Yeah, we try to make it as, as uh, we try to make as many ways to to find us as possible. So all the apps and the website, and of course, the terrestrial station, yeah. and now on OSN, we're like a we actually have a yeah. station all on OSN. So you yeah. can turn on your TV. Cool. 
So I actually had a question though. Um, so a couple of years back, you and Chris did the X Line Dubai. We did. We were, we were invited. Line. It was amazing. Yes, it is an invite only zip line yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How was it though? Was that how? Here's amazing. the best part. If you haven't seen our videos, there are some videos out there. The best part was. Then they didn't do this for many people. They actually turned the fountain on for us. So we I actually saw. went through the water. Yes, I saw the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very cool. I mean, I've gone skydiving a couple of times. It doesn't really compare to skydiving. Of course. It's not that thrill. Mm. It's just a, like a wee. It's really fun. But I wish they'd bring it back or something like it. What I was going to do, I was scheduled to do the dream drop, the dream jump, which was off of uh, um, in the... Uh, the Princess Tower in Dubai oh, Marina. So you yeah, just I jump off a platform, yes. and you basically go. It's like you're. It's like you're falling off of a building for most of it. Yeah, and so then it's basically suddenly, base jumping. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was scheduled the last day, and it mm. got winded out. There was too much <coughs> wind. Uh, yeah. I was kind of heartbroken, but I was also terrified that. Of course. Yeah, oh my God, no! But you usually get invited to these things, then. So. Some things, yeah. Do you try and look for them? Do you try and get people to invite you? Or if there's is something it? really cool, I will seek it out myself. I'll mm. be like, hey, I really want to do this. I really wanted to do that, yeah. um, but we have a good uh, relationship with X Dubai already, so it was pretty easy. So As an Indiana guy living in Dubai, how do you find Dubai? Uh, I mean, what? I was when I was talking about how the first couple of years I was like, I'm getting back to LA. Right. That's that was that was really my mentality, and yeah. unfortunately, I think the first couple of years I kind of I don't want to say I wasted it, but there was too much stress, and and my I didn't let my head just go. As soon as I decided, you know what I didn't do? I didn't buy permanent furniture. I kept buying this <laughs> junk from Ikea. Right. And then and then I saw this uh, I wanted to, I saw this chair or something or this table and I really, really wanted it, but it was expensive. And I thought, man, if I was home I'd buy that. And then I started thinking, I am home. You know, mm. this is home. I see. So that so transition that's occurred. That, that's about what two always years. happens, though. Because yeah. mm -hmm. also, when I came to Dubai, I was thinking, no, I'm not going to stay here that long. And then I think, okay, this is where I want to be. Mm. As soon as you let go, yeah. that's when you can truly be happy here. And I'm yeah. really happy. I find, I, I really, I mean, I said this at uh, Red Fest the other day on stage. You know, one one thing I do every year at Red Fest uh, is I get on stage, and it's such a cool thing. Cause you got all these people just you raging around up. you. You got this microphone that's so loud mm, yeah and I start I start calling out all the Emirates like who's for you know who's here from a and there's like two people you know and, then, but it, it's, and I always do it in an order and like when I get to Sharjah they're like yeah and you get to Abu Dhabi yeah and then I say you know um, and make some noise from the place that I call my hometown you know well, nice yeah, so so it's really awesome that you get these opportunities you know like Red Fest you get to meet people and see all the audiences like you get to be one of those like yeah stars basically and it's mm. kind of like it's it's fun to be i will tell you it's fun to be a local celebrity that's all <laughs> yeah, it's all i am at the most at the most i'm a local celebrity and and chris fade is the king of being sort of a local yeah, celebrity he's fade got show. such a great fandom here that i mean he can't even go to the mall without getting yeah. you know stopped several times i'll get like it. once or twice he'll he'll just get mobbed you know oh and how do you how would you just commenting on your Americanness, um, there aren't not that many Americans in Dubai. No, or, not. Yeah, they they make themselves known. <laughs> the ones that are here, I think you, they they pop out a lot. They stand out. I think Americans stand out. Yeah. So you are a local celebrity, but you're American. I don't know how many American local celebrities there are in Dubai. I think, it's, think? I think it's just me and Pretty Malik, and <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's got to be some here and there, but I mean. We, a, but Brit England has a stronger yeah, presence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got, you've got a, a good yeah. number. Of, when we came in, as far as radio was concerned, we came in and we wanted to be the anti everybody else, mm -hmm. and so we hired almost no uh, Brits, no, nobody from Britain, oh, because we didn't want that sound. And it wasn't like a, you know, it wasn't like a, a prejudicial thing or anything. We just wanted to be different from everybody. It was like else. a positioning. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So we had one one guy from the UK who's no longer with us in the very beginning. Um, and now we just have Big, Big Rossi. Rossi. Although Miles sounds British, he's Scottish though. Yeah. Miles, he's Scottish, but he does. Actually, I was gonna say British. that. I didn't know. But Miles is great because Miles was on a different station. He was on Radio One before he came to us, and I always heard him. I thought, man, that guy's got some really great ideas. He has mm -hmm. great. He just thinks he thinks in a different way. So we ended up stealing him. Yeah. Fantastic. Miles and Miles. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, but we wanted to be more international, and everybody else. When we heard here, it just seemed it seemed like it was just a bunch of British people doing <laughs> radio, yeah. and, and it didn't make any sense to us. So yeah. we're like, I mean, it, you know, obviously it wasn't. I didn't have anything to do with uh, the initial uh, 
casting, but now you know ever since then we're the we'll, we'll be like okay if we have a, a slot open or something let's get somebody let's get this person let's get whoever we just stole Sheena uh, from yeah. Ryan, um, who's fantastic I love her she's Canadian but I she's uh, Indian Canadian sounds I like I listen to Virgin Radio all day I'm like yes I know that yeah, person yeah, yeah. I know everyone yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm always on the that's radio that's great I love it <laughs> that's that's our idea we want we want to. We want an all-star lineup, you know, somebody yeah. that, or, and, and anytime you turn the radio on, we want to make sure that you're having a good time. And that you know the personality of the person? Yeah, person. and if you don't know them, at least you, you get to know them, you know. So other than on radio, do you hang out with them? I know Chris Fade's basically your best friend, yeah, but yeah, like, definitely. do you usually hang out with everyone on the crew? Or no. It depends um, because like the timings and stuff, but I, what about it's, it? Yeah, exactly. And Chris is, unfortunate because Chris's schedule, he's not only a really busy guy, but also the morning show just kills him, so he's he's into bed pretty early. I don't get to hang out with him as much as I'd like to. Um, I like everybody on the staff. That's that's one thing that hasn't always been the case because we've had some. I mean, they would make an amazing reality show. A radio would make an amazing reality behind show. the scenes. In the past, yeah, yeah, we've had we've had some some relationship, you know, and everybody does like a fa like any family, you have quarrels and stuff. Yeah. But as it stands right now, we all are just on such a great. Friendship level inside mm. and outside. We don't hang out with each other a lot just because we're all doing different things. Um, beyond Chris, I, I actually do hang out with Priti a lot. She and her husband Jeff. I love her, her husband Jeff, uh, who we push together and like get married, just get married. <laughs> That's how they did. Um, yeah. So I, hang, I do hang out with them uh, quite a bit. Probably, probably uh, as much as Chris anymore. Um, Miles and Maz, I don't see much outside. Once in a while, we, we try to get together, you know, once a month or so and just do something. It's not organized. It's just like, hey, you want to hang out? I spend most of my time with my bird. Oh, yes. Your, par <laughs> your parrot. Yes. I sent to our WhatsApp group for the uh, podcast the video of you uh, giving your parrot a bath. Oh my God! Did <laughs> oh, you really? Yeah. <laughs> am I wearing no, Am I wearing clothes in that? I hope I'm wearing clothes in that. <laughs> I think uh, at least partially. Yeah, yeah uh, but I have seen pictures on Instagram of your parrot. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's another thing. I never. So does know, that mean you're a pirate? Yeah. Well, I guess they always say you're either. Uh, <laughs> what you're uh, either a pirate or a ninja. Which one are you going to be? I, I'd definitely be a pirate. Um, I have, uh, yeah, that's another thing. I, when I first came to Dubai, I never would have uh, <coughs> thought of owning a, a pet, especially a, a, such a long-term pet like a parrot. Um, and if you don't know, yes, I have a, uh, she's a blue and gold macaw, and her name is Lloyd. <laughs> um, but and, uh, can you teach? You taught her to talk, and she's uh, she's starting to. Macaws yeah. take a long time, so yeah. I got her when she was six months, and now she's almost three. I see. Um, they take a long time to learn how to talk. So she says hello once in a while. She does it on her own time, though. She can't just make her. She just yeah, does it. she just and she'll casually. <laughs> she'll say yeah sometimes. Uh, she just did a good yeah earlier today, and then oh. she'll she'll laugh. What's really funny is if you laugh, sometimes she'll laugh after you. Ha ha ha! It's very funny. But that's so cute. Yeah. That's me. That is me and my bird. Oh, have you seen the macaw? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. she's funny. So yeah, she seemed to make a sad sound when you mentioned the bath. Um, I think she sort of uh, cried. Oh, she's much she better now. Like she loves it now. So oh, yeah. in the oh. beginning, she hated water, but now she absolutely loves water. <laughs> I have uh, I have this great. Uh, I want you to hear. This would be good for the podcast. I want you to hear her laugh. Oh, oh yes. Um, this is my girlfriend Marsha playing with Lloyd. Why are you hanging upside down? I'm crazy. You're so ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Can you do Steve? Ah, yeah. Can you do Steve? Ah, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. Can you do Stevie ah. Wonder? Stevie Wonder. Can ah. you, yeah. So. Oh. Why do you hang She gonna laugh? I, yeah, I guess she doesn't laugh. Really. I thought that was the one where she laughed. Sounded like she was kind of laughing. Uh, but it's, it's it's bizarre. She was going it's, ha. Yeah, but it's bizarre how she'll go. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it's very funny. Here well, we go. Now I want one. Here it is. She'll also go. She'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's snorting. Okay. You. <laughs> so 
That's that longer. is an amazing yeah, animal. Maybe want one. I would love her. Don't ever get a parrot. Don't no. Why? Ever, ever get a parrot. Addictive? Uh, no, just a tremendous amount of work. Yeah. Um, it's, she's probably going to outlive me. I mean, oh. they live to be 50, 60 years old. Wow. If you if you take care of them. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, I have the lifestyle that I can give her the time that she needs. She needs you. She needs to be out most of the time that you're home. Mm -hmm. um, they just yeah, they're just a bunch of work. But if if you treat them right, they're the best. The best. If you have time for them, yeah. But you gotta have time for them. And you have to be patient. Lots of patience, and you have to not mind getting bitten once in a while. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, I have cats, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure. think it's kind of the same. Yeah, Almost. In a way. You anyway. can leave them roam Except around. You can't, let, you can't let a parrot roam around, like, unsupervised. Oh, always okay. Always within yeah. eye range. Yeah. So. so what's the future for, and uh, this will be my wrap-up question. Okay. What is the future for Brent Black in Dubai? That is a great question, because uh, my program director keeps asking me that every year when we do our annual review, mm. and I never have a good answer for him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy what I do so much. I enjoy the... Um, I enjoy the show. I really enjoy the audience. We have such a great, such a great listenership, and yeah. I, I, I have such a, a good rapport with, with, them, and they, obviously, you know, again, there's there's other stories that I could go into. We don't have time, but they have shown me how much, uh, in in different ways, how much they they like and support me, um, and it, it's going to be so hard to leave that at any given point. If I, if I, you know, for whatever happens, you know, I, I, it's going to have to be something that I really want to do or they're going to have to force me out. Yeah. Which is the worst. And like, I, I've already experienced that. I know what it feels like. Right, so, right. You know, I, I could, I could see doing, you know, a morning show, even though I hate the hours. Um, but we have such a strong morning show that's not going away. So there's no place right now for me to want to go. So I really have been racking my brain to create a goal. Mm. What is a goal that I want to do? <laughs> and I'm having a hard time. I'm struggling. Well, that means you're happy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm tremendously happy.